Okay, um, very good morning to everybody. Um, yes, let's have a look. I think that's in view. Yeah, probably. Let's make sure it is. There you go. 20 past one in the morning in the UK at the moment. And it's Sunday the 22nd. What have we got here on the bench? Right, well, we've got a, a meter and we've got a box. And... I think I'm going to start with the box first, so let's just move the meter to one side slightly. And what we have in this box, and it already says it on the front there, but uh, we'll turn that over like that, just lift this out of the box and put it on the bench. And what we have here, I'm going to put that box over to the back there. What we have here is a one-to-one -one transformer or a two-to-one -one transformer, depending on which section you wire it to. Now, on this, um, you've got you know, your primary or your secondary. It's not particularly critical with this one. Um, basically 240 volts in and I can either have 240 or 415 volts out and this is the transformer that I'm going to use in the new capacitor tester and funny enough although it's this size um, it's actually only rated at 100 volt amps um, it's it's extremely well made um, the company here, uh, ETE, um, I've used them before and I've got some very good transformers off them and it's why I keep going back to them. Um, they specialise in control line stuff and um, you know down to 110, down to 24, down to 12. Um, but you know they, they obviously they're designed for industrial stuff and they they make stuff that has to comply with all the re uh, regulations and they make stuff that is actually designed to meet its ratings rather than um, some of these Chinese ones that say oh yeah this will do 50 volt amps and it's half the size of this um, as I say th this is this is meant to be a one amp transformer um, so yeah it's a bit of a beast um, so that's that's really the first thing um, that I was going to show you as I say, 240 in, sorry, 240 in, 415 out, um, even though it says input and output that way around, I am actually going to wire it backwards. And um, for the tra uh, for the uh, capacitor checker, um, it's, it, it's just going to be ideal for the thing, you know. Um, yes, it's extremely heavy, you know, this, this thing weighs um, around about a kilo. Um, so about two, two and a bit pounds, two and a quarter pounds. Um, so it's it's a very heavy duty transformer, and um, as you see, double wound, single phase, rating 100 volt amps, um, input and output, 50, 60 hertz, Class E transformer. Eastern Transformers Equipment Limited, as I say, www.ete.co.uk, and you can either buy from the website or they do have an eBay shop and um, I would certainly recommend going there. They also provide a 24 hour shipping service. So, you know, you, you, you buy it on a Monday, you'll get it on Tuesday um, as long as you buy it early enough in the day. Very good company. So anyway, enough waffling about transformers. I'm going to put that one over to this side of the bench for the moment and just rest it over there. The other thing that has uh, appeared is a Heathkit VTVM. And, you know, yes, I bought this as a untested spares or repair. And this is the UK model of the V7, um, the V7A, sorry, uh, and you tell that by the U, um, made in the UK, uh, I don't know whether this was originally a kit or whether this one was factory built. As you can see on this, I have a bent needle. Uh, that's the first thing that, that comes to mind. Um, also, it's fitted with these uh, 
these little sockets here. I'm not sure if they're four mil or not. Let me just get a, a pair of four mil. You know, yeah, they are. So I could sit a standard pair of test leads in there. Um, yeah, um, I was worried about that actually. I didn't know whether to use these or the or change them for screw-on terminals. The knobs themselves, they're not split. Um, everything seems to turn. And from the outside, you know, yeah, it looks a bit of a state. This 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 plastic meter face is a bit scratched, so I'm going to have to see if I can polish some of those out. A um, bit of paint on the top. The box itself, a little bit of rust on the on the finish. Um, easy enough to cure. So let's see if I can pop it apart. Sorry if I'm doing this off bench, but I need to put a little bit of force behind it. Right, so um, here we have the insides. And again, that can just go on the floor down there. And uh, it's not got a battery in, and the mains connector, the mains wire's been snipped. There's no strain relief at all on this cable. So um, that's one job that I'm going to have to put in. Um, the battery is obviously missing, but that's not a problem. Um, I have a great big um, capacitor in here, a nice big waxy capacitor, which I'll probably get rid of and put a modern, um, modern plastic one in there, which will A, give me a lot more space, and B, won't... Um, look as horrible and yuck as that. Um, everything else in here, um, I would say this was made up from a kit because this, the soldering and the the way the resistors are put together there, um, not the best in the world. It looks like I've got a dry joint there. Um, yeah, so that's that's that side of it. Um, what have we got here? Right, well the two valves that are in it, I've got a I've got a Mullard ECC82, which is a 12 AU7, I believe. So um, yeah, I can't see um, BOB1. I don't know if that's the Blackburn factory. Um, 012, um, is that 19, week one of 1962? Could be. So that's the uh, the AU7. And this one is, I wonder if it's another Mullard. No, it's a Brymar. It's a Brymar 6AL5. And uh, again, another, um, is there a date code on this? Um, 41 um, so this looks like it's a, a, a lot later this tube 77 um, could be sort of the last tubes before before the end of production so yep yeah, we've got those what else have we got in here a um, couple of uh, eerie capacitors there um, so that one and a half kV working, yeah. A lot of these carbon comp resistors, which are, um, yeah, um, I don't know whether they'll have drifted by now. And this electrolytic has actually got a date of 1962 on it, so that at least dates the dates the meter and dates the assembly to around about that sort of time. I won't say it's exactly that sort of time. Um, yeah, um, apart from that, you know, the, yes, this has definitely been kit built because there's uh, solder burns on the wires. Um, let's say there's no strain relief on that. Um, yeah, battery positive goes in, negative goes to the back. The finish on that, is actually on the spring for the battery is quite good because there's uh, very little corrosion on it. Um, 
might just there's just a tiny tiny bit on there I think I'll have a go at uh, scraping that off with a blade um, and we have a pilot light bulb which um, what I can do while we're while we're sitting here is I'll uh, take that out um, I think it's okay let's just uh, grab a little cheap and cheerful Chinese uh, muscle meter uh, turn it to ohms and let's select diode test which should yeah let's select again so that not capacitance ohms with a beeper yeah so so the bulbs working as well um, so that's handy I didn't know whether the uh, other versions of this had actually got a pilot light in them um, some of the circuit diagrams I've seen have shown that there's no lighting at all and people have uh, added a pilot light in the middle of the face here um, I've also seen a modification where um, they join these together and put the pilot light here in the center just to say that um, just so that they don't have to um, you know have separate leads and move leads about but I, I'm not so keen on that idea um, so uh, yeah uh, this will be one of the next toys I play with then and uh, I'm looking forward to getting this going and um, it's going to be fairly straightforward you know I've got to do resistor test ah the rectifier is a selenium rectifier um, I'm probably just going to change that for probably a 1N4007 will do the same job because um, selenium rectifier selenium rectifiers when I get my words right are notorious for going bad so yeah um, I think that's that's pretty much it you know there's the switch doesn't look damaged anyway there's no arcing or corrosion on on any of the wafers there the one down the bottom just looking in there yep again clean um, clean and tidy so uh, yeah I think this one's gonna be a, a fairly straightforward um, repair job on this actually um, mm. Yeah, what else can I say about it? You know, once once I uh, test it out, obviously the first thing I'm going to actually check um, is that this transformer is definitely a 240 volt transformer. I'm pretty sure it is, um, but there's no harm in checking. Um, and the easiest way to test that is connect the supply to the variac and actually measure the heater voltages. Um, and as you bring it up, if at 110 that reads 6.3 volts, I know it's a 110 transformer. If it only reads 3.15 volts, I know it's a 240 volt transformer. Nice and straightforward, nice and easy, and um, can't really argue about it really. Um, as I say, some of this looks a bit poor. I, I may end up I don't know whether to take it apart and rebuild it. Obviously, I'm going to have to take the meter apart to straighten straighten the needle if I can. Um, if I can't, I'm going to be um, looking for another meter. Um, apart from that, you know, that resistor has been sort of squished in sort of uh, fairly badly. 10x, so that'll be the 10 times scale. It doesn't have a doesn't have a proper value written on the board so that'll be a circuit diagram thing right okay I think I'm gonna leave it there and uh, we'll actually do the work on this uh, in the next video but they're the things I wanted to show you and uh, hopefully we'll see you again soon bye for now